the life and legacy of the commander of the faithfuls, Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, the first man in Islam, the cousin of the Prophet, his son-in-law, the first defender and supporter of the Prophet. We will discuss his sacrifice and his contributions over 30 episodes. So please join me. I'm your brother, Mustafa Al-Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, our thanks and our gratitude are due to Him. May His peace and blessing be upon all of His messengers and the last messenger to mankind, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. May the peace of the Lord be upon you and with you, my dear brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So after the victory of Khaybar that took place on the seventh year of the Hijra, and it was in the beginning of the month of Muharram, then we come to another chapter in the history of Islam. A chapter that is characterized by the bravery of Ali ibn Abi Talib. The heroism of Ali ibn Abi Talib. The selflessness of this man. And here we arrive into the conquest of Mecca which took place in Ramadan of the eighth year of Hijrah. Now, the Muslim army mostly was hungry, it was broke, did not have any military supply. But after the victory of Khaybar, they were able to receive war booties, some weapon, some food, money, weapon. So, the Prophet here decided that it's time now to go back to Mecca. And the reason why he, he decided to go back to Mecca, because there was a peace treaty called Hudaybiyah, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, between the Prophet on the one side and Quraysh on the other side, that there shall be a ceasefire for 10 years. But this ceasefire was violated by Quraysh. How did it happen? In the peace treaty, they state that whoever wants to join the Muslims in alliance, even though if they are non-Muslims, they can join. And whoever wants to join Quraysh in their alliance, to be their allies, they can join. So one of the tribes by the name of Khuza'ah, though they were not Muslims, but they said we will join the Muslims as their allies. And their rivals by the name of Bani Bakr, they joined Quraysh as their allies. And the peace treaty states that if you attack the Muslims or their allies, though they are non-Muslims, as if you are attacking the Muslims. Or if you are attacking Quraysh and any one of their allies, then it means you are attacking Quraysh itself. And here, Banu Bakr, who had an alliance with Quraysh, they attacked Khuza'a and they killed several people of them who had an alliance with the Muslims. So the peace treaty was violated. And this means that war was declared against the Muslims by Quraysh. 
So the Prophet decided that since there is no more peace treaty, we have to take back Mecca. And here he mobilized 10,000 people from Medina to move south to Mecca, to retake it from the polytheists. And the Prophet is not an invader. The Prophet is from Mecca. He's Meccan. He was born in Mecca. He was raised in Mecca. His father, his grandfather, his great-grandfather, all his forefathers are from Mecca for hundreds of years. So he's not a stranger. He's not invading a foreign territory. He's going back home. He's going back to a, ho a home, a house, that he was driven out of it. So he, here again he calls Ali. And he gives him the <clears throat> standard, the military banner, the military flag that resembles the glory and the might of the Muslims. So he carries that and they, they head towards Mecca. But they camp outside Mecca. And Meccans realize that this army is an Islamic army. Before they left, one of the weak-spirited Muslims by the name of Hatib ibn Abi Balta was considered to be part of the hypocrites in Medina. He sent the news to the Meccans that Muhammad is coming to you. He gave the letter to a lady and she took the book. She took this letter heading towards Meccans to let them know. But then God informed the Prophet and the Prophet asked Imam Ali to go after her with a Zubair and they were able to find her just outside Medina on the way to Mecca and first she denies she says I don't carry anything but Imam Ali said you're carrying it in your hair give it to me so she had to give him the letter he brought the letter to the Prophet and the Prophet realized that unfortunately it comes from one of the people of Medina sending a warning to his friends in Mecca that Muhammad will be there soon so to cut the story short the Muslim army started going inside Mecca without a bloodshed, bloodshed without any confrontation no military confrontation. No person was even wounded in recapturing Mecca. Because Quraysh realized that there are 10,000 fighters here. And Muhammad وسلم, kept sending messages that this is a peaceful recapturing of the city. I'm not here to kill. But then Sa'ad ibn Ibadah, who was carrying the banner of the Ansar, the helpers, when he passed and Abu Sufyan was standing and watching. So when Sa'ad ibn Ibadah reached the position of Abu Sufyan, the arch enemy of the Prophet, he said to him, Al yawm yawm al malhama, al yawm yawm al malhama, al yawm tusbal hurma. Today, is the day of the big battle. Today your women are going to be taken captive. Abu Sufyan, he went crazy. So when the Prophet came, he said to him, Ya Muhammad, didn't you say that this is a peaceful recapturing? No one is going to be killed. No one is going to be taken as captive. The Prophet said, yes, indeed, this is what I said. Abu Sufyan said, but this Sa'ad is saying something else. 
So the Prophet sent Imam Ali after Sa'd. He said, go and take the banner from him. And tell him not to use these, this type of language anymore. Threatening language. He should refrain from that. And take the banner from him. He cannot be the standard bearer. You will be the standard bearer. Hamil or Raya. And Imam Ali replaced that by saying, Al-Yawm, Yawm Al-Marhama. Today is not the day of battle. Today is the day of mercy and forgiveness. And the Prophet said, whoever puts his weapon down is going to be immune. We give him amnesty. Whoever goes inside Masjid Al-Haram, he's immune. Whoever sits in his house is going to be immune. From any attack. So Imam Ali was leading the army, entering the city of Mecca. And when once they entered Mecca, Mecca was filled with idols. Inside the house, at the top of the house, in all the corners. It was filled with hundreds of idols by Meccans who used to come and worship these statues. The Prophet ordered the house to be cleaned and cleansed because originally this house was built by Ibrahim based on monotheism, Tawheed, not idol worshipping, not idolatry. So it was contaminated with idol worshipping. These idols were brought inside the masjid later on. Originally this mosque, this temple, It was built to worship God. It was built based on monotheism, not polytheism. So it has to remain clean. So they started the process of cleaning the mosque from idols, from these statues. And some of them were placed at the top, at the roof of the Kaaba. So here, the Prophet said to Ali, Ali, I want you to carry me on your shoulder so I can destroy the idols from the roof of the Kaaba and then Ali this is very interesting ila jambil Kaaba. Ali says I sat next to the wall of the Kaaba ala minkibi. the Prophet sallallahu alayhi ascended upon my shoulders فقال, now you can stand so I can reach the top of the Kaaba I stood when the Prophet realized I am too weak to carry him. قال, sit down. فجلست. I sat down. وقال, you go and stand on my shoulder. I stood on his shoulders. ثم نهض بي حتى خيل لي أن لو شئت نلت السماء. When the Prophet lifted me up and I was standing on his shoulder, I realized that I can touch the sky. I can touch the sky while I was standing on the shoulders of the Prophet. وصعدت على الكعبة. So I was able to climb at the top of the Kaaba, the roof. فَأَلْقَيْتُ الصَّنَمَ الْأَكْبَرِ The cardinal idol that was placed there and fixed to the, to the floor, to the roof of the Kaaba. I started demolishing that one and the others that were next to him. فَلَمْ أَزَلْ أُعَالِجُهُ I was struggling to demolish it. وَرَسُولُ اللَّهِ يَقُولُ إِيهٍ إِيه Yes, yes, Ali, yes, good job. The Prophet was encouraging me. حَتَّى 
قلعته until I uprooted the idol from the roof of the Kaaba. فقال دقه the Prophet said toss him toss it to the ground فدققته وكسرته ونزلت so I tossed him to the ground and I started breaking it into pieces and then I came down. Then after the day of Mecca, the conquest of Mecca, there were some tribes preparing themselves to attack the Muslims in Mecca. So the Prophet decided that I have to take them by surprise. These two tribes were the tribe of Hawazin and the tribe of Thaqif. They decided that they have to continue res resisting Muhammad and his message and his mission. And they would fight against him. So the Prophet knew about their plan, that they are planning to attack the Muslim army. And therefore he mobilized his troops and they were about 12,000. 10,000 of them who came from Medina, another 2,000 who are the new converts in Mecca who accepted Islam. And the Prophet gave the banners to different tribes in his army, different groups. He distributed the banners over them. And he left and he gave Imam Ali the banner of the Muhajireen. But Hawazin was too smart. So they decided to lay out, lay in wait for the Muslims when they have to cross certain way, certain path that they must cross it, then they will attack them there. And of course, when the Muslims left Mecca, they were big in number. 12,000, it's a huge number. Abu Bakr here looked at the number of the army. He said, لا نغلب اليوم من قلة. We are not little anymore. So we are not going to be defeated anymore. Today, we are a strong army, big army. But then Hawazin, they had another plan for the Muslims. So they were ambushing them. Once the Muslims started to cross that passageway into the valley, they ambushed them. They took them by surprise and they attacked the Muslims and they killed many of them. The rest of the Muslim army ran away as usual. And the Prophet was calling upon them. The Abbas he had a huge voice, the uncle of the Prophet. He started calling upon them. How do you leave your Prophet, the messenger of God alone? Come back. And Ali was standing as a guard, protecting the life of the Prophet. Because if the Prophet gets killed on that day, then Islam is over. It's over. So he had to fight and defend to protect the life of the Prophet. Only few people stayed with Imam Ali. Someone by the name of Ayman ibn Ubaid, Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet, and few group of Bani Hashim, the immediate family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So when Ali stood there, and the Prophet resisted, slowly, slowly, the Muslims, they started coming back to the battlefield and they started fighting against Hawazin. And Hawazin had a leader, military leader, by the name of Abu Jarwal. Hamilu him. He was the standard bearer of their army. That person was put down by Ali ibn Abi Talib. When he was put down by Ali, 
Others also were put down of the same tribe, Hawazin. The rest of their army fled the scene and could not resist the bravery of Amir al Mu'min. After that came the Battle of Tabuk, but the Prophet wanted Imam Ali to stay in Medina. He said, O oh Ali, there is a lot of conspiracy against us, and I need a person who is very powerful, trustworthy, and strong to stay in Medina. We can't leave Medina for the conspiracies of the hypocrites. If me and you go to this battle, both, Medina will be left with no leadership. And here we need strong leader. So if I join the battalion of Tabuk, you must stay here. And he said to him this important sentence. And taminni bimanzilati Haruna min Musa. The Prophet actually said this hadith in numerous times, many times, on different occasions. One of them was the day he left for Tabuk. And taminni bimanzilati Haruna min Musa. Illa annahu la nabiyya ba'di. You are to me like Aaron to Moses, though there is no prophet after me. So I want you to stay in Medina to protect Medina against the conspiracies of the fifth column, the hypocrites, the munafiqeen. Ya Ali, inna al-Medina la taslihu illa bi aw bik. My city, my capital, Medina, cannot be safe and secure unless you are there or I am there. So if I am leaving, you have to stay. And that was the only battle that Imam Ali did not go to. And actually there were no battle. When the Prophet reached there, the Roman army retreated. So there were no uh, combat during that excursion. So Ali stayed in Medina to protect the city of Medina against the conspiracies. It was very hectic. Islam did not have an easy journey. Islam faced two types of threats, external, but most importantly, internal. Some people from within who accepted Islam either by force or against their will, not out of conviction, not out of understanding or love. So they decided to destroy Islam from within. So the Prophet had to leave Imam Ali there. And every day they will face a new story, new saga, new conspiracy against Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.